Do you have 5G? Or do you have the real 5G? We're almost a year since the first 5G towers were set up in Southern California, and I got to play with a hardcore professional phone to do some speed tests. How far has ultra-wideband 5G spread? Are the speeds legit? And what can we really use them for? It's time to check in. Let's go hunting for fast 5G. Hey folks, Juan Carlos Bagnell here for Reviews.org and two things to kick off this video. Do that thing with the subs and the bell icon because this is a rad team and you want to know what's up. And two, I want to see in the comments, in your region, do you have access to any 5G yet. Do a little typing down below. In my suburban neck of the woods, coverage on all carriers is pretty poor. Literally in my office on LTE, I can barely hold down five megabit per second downloads. T-Mobile recently put up a 5G tower though, and it's getting me back up to more regular broadband consumer speeds. What we have here is known as sub six, 5G, basically any connection under 6 gigahertz. Millimeter wave, or what Verizon calls ultra wideband, is a 28 gigahertz connection. In many ways, sub 6 is kind of like LTE on steroids. It likely won't boost speeds as dramatically as millimeter wave, but it should be a decent step up. More, sub 6 employs new radio tech that helps towers handle more users and reduces congestion. That's a cool geeky upgrade, but it doesn't look as nifty as big fast speeds in advertisements. Millimeter wave gets those big speeds, but the signal can't broadcast very far from the tower, and it's not great at penetrating through walls and buildings. I got to spend some time recently with the Sony Xperia Pro, which is kind of a crazy phone built specifically to be the broadcast brain for professional grade cameras, and wouldn't you know it, a major feature of the phone is support for Verizon Ultra Wideband. Cough, cough, millimeter wave 5G. We only have that sub six tower in my neighborhood, so we had to go wardrobe driving for towers down near Venice Beach. I always love it when we get to take a field trip. Immediately, especially as a tech journalist trying to hunt through coverage maps is really frustrating. Verizon's map will highlight city blocks that should have coverage, but in reality, that was still just a loose guide on where I might find some signal. In this first generation of millimeter wave phones, it's also a more power intensive connection a rapid burst of speed, but you don't want the phone to stay locked on that all the time or it would nuke your battery. So while I was hunting for signal, if I didn't have some kind of app streaming all the time, the phone would try to fall back to a more battery friendly LTE. On my hunt, I had to do most of the searching on foot. Millimeter wave is still being installed block by block and driving, I was traveling too fast to get a reliable notification when I'd found a tower. I definitely hit my my step count that morning. I eventually found an open parking lot where I could get a few speed tests finished and the downloads were pretty dramatic. My best run landing a two gigabit download. That's five times faster than the really expensive home cable broadband I pay for. The upload wasn't quite as extreme, but 100 megabits upload is still roughly three times faster than my home cable, so that ain't nothing to sneeze at. Very impressive results, but that signal was pretty easily lost even on foot. Walking a block away, and you quickly lose sight of that tower. The phone drops you back down to sub six or LTE. And while Verizon is slowly expanding their footprint in population dense areas, even here in Southern California, in advertised target markets, this kind of connection is patchy. There's a little uncertainty here. Where does millimeter wave fit? And how much should consumers be paying attention to this? Sub six upgrades seem relatively straightforward. Millimeter wave requires a lot more investment to cover the same number of people. Millimeter wave will be a fantastic tech to use in places where a lot of people meet up. It makes a ton of sense in my brain at stadiums where you'll have a bunch of people and dividing users up between millimeter wave sub six and LTE will free up a lot of congestion talking to different radios and towers. The flip side of that fun 
including all the antennas to support sub-6 and millimeter wave, likely contributes to higher phone prices. With Verizon pushing their UW branding on phones that support millimeter wave, a lot of those consumers are likely paying for tech they might not ever use on this generation of phones. My experience is hunting for millimeter wave. This is an exciting technology for broadcasters and content creators. Being able to hook up a phone to be the brain of a nice camera and broadcast directly over a super fast data pipe is a professional dream come true. Ditto pro photographers, taking an afternoon of super large raw files from a nice camera and quickly backing them up to the cloud or some kind of network storage without ever needing to whip out a laptop is crazy handy. If your needs are more modest than that though, I'm not exactly sure what the hook will be. There is an interesting idea in 5G being a competitor for home internet, but we still need to build the towers. Especially for more rural folks who already struggle to get cabled broadband, it's unlikely that millimeter wave towers will be the solution for home data. There is an exciting tech upgrade happening, we just need to see how fast it can spread. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do that bell icon thing so you don't miss any of our coverage on phones, networks, services, and smart home technology. And we want those comments. Are you using any 5G in your neck of the woods? Let's have a chat underneath this video. For Reviews.org, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, and I'll catch you all on the next video.